Well, it is lovely to be with you uh, remotely today, and uh, we trust and pray that a very simple look at the the wonderful news of God's good news and God's message of, of salvation will be of help to all of us. I've given a title to what I'd like to speak on this evening as Another Night with the Frogs. Now, please don't think this is an anti-European message or anything like it. It's just a, a, a particular passage in the scripture that I'd like to talk about um, relating to Pharaoh and the, uh, the king of Egypt and the children of Israel. So I'm going to read from the Bible. If you'd like to follow it, you would find it in Exodus in chapter 8. If you haven't got a Bible, please don't worry. I'll read this as clearly as I can, and then you'll be able to see exactly what we're going to be speaking on this afternoon. This is what we read in the word of God. Then the Lord spake unto Moses, go unto Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thy house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into, thy into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people, and into, thy kneading, into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee and upon thy people and upon all thy servants. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers and over the ponds, and cause the frogs to come up upon the, upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand and, uh, over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with uh, their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me. When shall I entreat for thee that, and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thee and thy houses? that they may remain in the river only. And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from thee, from thine houses, and from thy servants, and from thy people. And thou shalt remain, and they shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought upon Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs dried up, dried out, uh, died out of the houses, and out of the villages, and out of the fields. And they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. And when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart, and hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. And we know that God allowed a rich blessing to the reading of his own precious word. That may seem uh, a, maybe a bit of an unusual uh, passage to read when you think of the gospel, but I want to take it by, more by way of an illustration more than anything else. And I trust you'll, you'll just bear with me as I put a little bit of context to that so that you understand what's, what's happening in this passage. The children of Israel have been in bondage in the land of Egypt for many years, and God had seen their travel. God had seen the difficulties they were going to going through and he came he says he came down to deliver them in other words what we see is that god was going to liberate the children of israel out of the land of egypt and he did that by the 10 plagues that people have often referred to this is one of the plagues that was spoken about here and what i want to do is really as i say take this as a picture of the the catastrophe that was going on the the calamity that they were going through at that time because without a shadow of a doubt this is you even as you read it you can understand that this was a pretty and unpleasant and a pretty difficult place to be the frogs were everywhere there wasn't a single person that wasn't affected by this and what you see is that if you just take that in itself as a picture for a moment you can see that in the world in which we live, the truth is that sin is everywhere. The truth is that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when you think of the, the, the observations that we have of the world at large, sometimes we fail to bring that down into a microscope onto our own lives and to realize actually it's us that are sinners as well. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
So what we see is that in this picture here, the problem was so obvious. The problem was so clear. And what you see is that, that there wasn't a, a, a single life that, that wasn't touched by this. But more importantly, the resolution to the problem was something that could not be done by man. If they could, they would, but they couldn't. And they were needing to call upon the name of God. This is really why this passage came into my mind, because I don't want to refer, keep referring to this pandemic that we've been through, because I'm sure, like me, you're, 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 you're almost weary with hearing of it every day. But nevertheless, what I want to do is just to take a, an illustration there to say, when you think in the world in which we live, in the time that we're living in now, how men have spent billions and billions and billions of pounds and spent so much time and so much energy in order to try and bring under control a microscopic organism that, that's causing a problem in our world. They do all of that. It consumes all of our minds and all of our attention. And the thing that concerns me most is this, the people today, they will, they will spend their whole living days consumed by that thought and they will never budge one inch towards God. They will never look at a greater pandemic in their lives, a greater problem in their life, which is the issue of sin. And we know that the Bible teaches very clearly that all have sinned. And the Bible tells us very clearly, it says in Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 2, it says, but your iniquities or your sin have separated between you and your God, and your sin have hid his face from you that he will not hear. It's our sin that separates us from God. And you're in that position where you think, well, what on earth can I do then? If this problem is bigger than me and I can't take it away by myself, how do I overcome it? Well, I actually would just encourage you to go away and look at Isaiah 59 because I read to you verse 2, but verse 1 that comes before it says this, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. In other words, there is a solution, and it's in the one whose hand is not shortened. Why? Because he is a savior that came into the world to be the savior of the world. That's why the father sent the son, to be the savior of the world. And it says his ear is not heavy that it cannot hear. There is there, there's nothing that, that is outside the, the, the cry of a feeble heart from God or to God to, to declare that, yes, I am a sinner in need of salvation. And that's really the thing that we need to do is to recognize what we are and to call upon the only one that is able to save. Because you see, in this passage that we read today, the 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 the, uh, um, the calamity was obvious. The difficulty that they were going through was obvious. And if you put yourselves in the shoes of those that lived at that time, put yourself in the shoes of Pharaoh, and you see around you this thing that you cannot control, and then you think to yourself, but I know that there is one who can resolve this. And you know, Pharaoh had a desire, and his desire was very good. His desire, in a sense, was very obvious. He wanted to be free from the plague of frogs. But the dilemma that he was in was that there was only one person who could resolve that issue for him. So in order to avail himself of the solution to the problem, he first had to, ha had to admit his own helplessness. And then we see that Pharaoh's decision it was something that is quite extraordinary, really. But when you think of those first two points and you think of ourselves, you think to yourself, there, there's a hymn that says, would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. And that's the precious blood that the Lord Jesus Christ shed on Calvary's cross to pay the price of sin in full. Because there he paid the penalty in full. We have an issue that we cannot do something about. We have an issue where the evidence of it is all around us. No matter where we go in our lives, no matter what we think of in our lives, we home it into ourselves personally and realize that this message is a message that speaks to us as an individual. And what you see is that for us, we need to get to the point where we acknowledge that we have this issue and that we cannot do anything about it ourselves, admitting 
that we are a sinner in need of salvation and crying to the only one who is able to save. But what was Pharaoh's decision? You know, the Bible tells us that Moses and Aaron, they went to God and they spoke to God and God said, I'll do it. Inquire of Pharaoh when he wants that done. You know what Pharaoh said? We read it together and just in case you missed it, I'll tell you what it is. He said, tomorrow, tomorrow. To my end of my days, I will never ever understand that answer. He had the opportunity to be liberated right then, right there. He could have cried to God because he recognized that in God was the power to be able to deliver. Oh, we saw that the, the, there were those in the land of, of Egypt who could add to the problem of the frogs, but not one of them could remove the problem of the frogs. And you know, that's true of ourselves. In the world in which we live, there are many, many people who can add to the issue of sin, but there is only one who can remove the issue of sin. And what you see for us, and if you think once again about this pandemic and we say to you that there is an answer, there's a solution, there's a, there, there's a recovery that can be made that will eradicate the problem completely, can you think of one person who would say, I'll tell you what, I'll wait until tomorrow? And yet, when it comes to the issue of the soul, when it comes to the issue of your eternal destiny, there are people who are paying, playing fast and loose with that because the Bible makes it crystal clear. We don't know what a day will bring forth. None of us knew this was coming around the corner, did we? And yet, here's the situation that, that Pharaoh was in. He, had, he knew where the answer was. He knew who could give the alleviation to the problem. But he said, I'll tell you what, I'll wait until tomorrow. You know, when we think of the gospel, there are many people who put off the message of the gospel. What is the message of the gospel? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Saved from what? Well, that means that we'll be saved from the, the penalty of sin, the, the judgment of sin, because he removes our sin. The Bible says he removes our sin as far as the east is from the west. I love that, you know, because if it said north and south, then there are two poles. OK, they're, they're very, very far apart. But nevertheless, it's a measurable distance. But when it says east and west, that's a direction. And we'll never see, never see that. And what the Bible says that is that that's what he's prepared to do for us, to remove our sins as far as the east is from the west. So what are the excuses that people bring up? Some will say, well, I, I just actually like my life as it is at the moment. I love my sin. I like the way I live and I don't care. You know, there are others who will say, well, I'm a good person. But, you know, Proverbs says, who can say, I have made my heart clean. I am pure from my sin. Not one of us. And what we understand is that in this, in this particular instance, in this particular example that we have here, understanding the problem was one thing, but requesting help from the problem acknowledging that we are part of that problem. But then there are others who say, well, I'm too, I'm too far away from God. I'm too evil. You know, you can go through scripture and time and time again, you'll see people, the greatest example of the man who was on the cross next to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm getting what I deserve. We indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But he looked at the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and he said, but this man has done nothing amiss. So why did he die? Well, you know, the verse next to that tells us that the man heard from the lips of the Savior. He says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You see, there's none of us outside the reach. You know, there is some of people who will say, well, I, I can't keep it up. Well, it's not about you pursuing uh, being, being able to keep it up. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, there are others who say, I don't understand the gospel. Well, the gospel message is so simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And, you know, as you look through these tragic events in the days of, of, uh, of Pharaoh and the land of Egypt, you think to yourself, there are many people in the world today who will do whatever it is to add one more day of breath into their lives but they'll never consider what they need to do to be right for eternity. 
can I implore upon you today to think about the consequences of not acknowledging the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Savior. The Bible does speak of, of heaven. It does speak of hell. It does speak of the realities of those things. But, you know, I don't know if you noticed when we started the meeting, there was a text that was put on the screen at the beginning, and it says this, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What a promise. What a hope. What a reality to know that we don't need to spend another moment in our sin. We can know what it is to have forgiveness of sin, not through merit, not through intellect, not through in, in, in our own um, efforts, but through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sin away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. I wonder today, would you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own and personal Savior? Or will you spend another night, another day, needlessly in your sin? For, and instead, I wonder today whether you would trust him whom to know his life eternal.